Claren Rock Off-Road here. We're going to do another install video today. Uh, JK 3.5 inch lift kit. So JK is a 2007 to 2018 Jeep Wrangler. And this is our 3.5 inch benchmark series kit. So we've got three different lift kits for the JK. We've got a foundation series, a benchmark series, and a premium kit. It's sort of a good, better, best type situation. So the foundation series comes with everything you need and nothing you don't. Um, the benchmark series where we add some of the commonly upgraded items. For example, our rear coil spring retainers, uh, rear bump stop spacers, front control arms, uh, just some of the first things you'd want to add to your lift kit. The premium series is our top level short arm lift kit. So it's going to come with basically everything we sell for a JK short arm kit. It's going to come with adjustable upper and lower control arms, front and rear. It's going to come with track bars front and rear, brake lines front and rear. All the premium stuff, all the best stuff, everything you need for a top quality short arm lift kit. So with our Benchmark Series lift kit, here's all the parts you're going to get. Front and rear coil springs, front and rear shocks, front track bar, front adjustable lower control arms with flex ends on one end, rubber bushing on the other end, rear brake hoses, front brake hose brackets. These here are optional. These are our uh, adjustable bump stop spacers. So they're, we call them our stackable bump stops. They're adjustable from one to four inches and anything in between in half inch increments. Um, included with the kit are rear coil spring retainers, front sway bar links, rear bump stop spacers, and finally a rear track bar bracket. So here's all the parts. Let's get to installing them. Before you even take your Jeep apart, you can prepare all the parts and get them all ready to go in the Jeep. We're going to assemble our control arms, assemble our track bar, sway bar links, we're going to put all our poly bushings in, assemble our flex ends, get everything ready to go. All right, we're going to assemble our flex end, hardware kit 127. Start with the flex end washer and a race, a couple of bolts to hold it all together. A little bit of grease on the mating surfaces. It's just regular multi-purpose grease. We don't need anything fancy. Slide this in. If you get it nice and straight, it goes in easy. Slide it in all the way up to the shoulder. Light coat of grease on the mating surfaces. All of our parts are made in-house, designed and built right here in the building. So that allows us to run a very tight tolerance. We can do cool features like this with no wrench needed. Not tightening yet, I'm just snugging it up a little bit. Next up we're going to assemble our track bar. It's hardware kit 166. So we're going to put a little anti-seize on the nail threads. Oh yeah. Before I forget, the bracket goes on before the mail end, so carriage bolt and a nut. Now the way this goes in your Jeep is with this bend facing up and facing forward. And you want the nut on this facing forward. So the bracket faces down, nut faces forward. Then you can put in your mail end. You can adjust the length to 32 and 3 quarter center to center as a starting point. Again, they're the same diameter, so center to center is going to be the same as right edge to right edge. So I'm going to leave everything loose for now. Next is the poly bushings. A little bit of multi-purpose grease on the inside and the outside. These are supposed to fit pretty tight because you don't want any slap in these. Grease up the sleeve. Track bar is ready to go in. Next up is our sway bar links. Just a light coat of multi-purpose grease. The grease on the inside. And the sway bar links are ready to go. Next up is the rear shocks. 
You're going to need hardware kit 165, which is the bar pins, and the shock sleeves are in with your shock hardware. A little bit of multi-purpose grease. The lower side is going to get the 12mm uh, shock sleeve, and the upper side is going to get the bar pin. We ground down one side so it's angled so you can insert it. Um, put a little grease on that side. Set it standing up in the vise. Grease up your bushing well. This on. Until it goes on. And your rear shocks are ready to go. All right, front shocks. We'll start with the uh, fancy washer and the stub bushing. Throw them both on here for now, just to keep it all together and ready to go. It's a very light coating of grease. And your front shocks are ready to go. That wraps up all of our bench work. Now it's time to take apart the Jeep. Take these tiny little tires off, throw them right in the trash. Next up, we're going to remove the shocks. We're going to remove the sway bar links. Lower control arms. Track bar. Springs. Get everything ready for the new parts. <laughs> We're going to loosen our factory upper control arm bolts. We're not replacing the upper control arms, but we're loosening them up just to reset the rubber to its new resting position at the three and a half inches of lift. Rubber bushings like to flex, they don't actually pivot, so you need to reset them to, the, to their new resting position. Now we are adding caster to this kit, so your new con lower control arm is going to be a little bit longer than your old ones. Normally I recommend putting the rubber bushing in first. Um, Oh, we've got a hoist arm in our way, so. The bend goes up for ground clearance and in to clear the tire. Now one thing you do need to do for extreme flex, you just need to grind a little bit of clearance right here. We're gonna grind off this corner right here. It's the uh, inside corner towards the center of the Jeep. We're just putting the nuts in place. We're not tightening them yet. It's still loose. We're going to tighten it with the weight on the suspension with the vehicle at ride height. We're going to install our optional stackable bump stops. So the first step, I'm just eyeballing this thing right in the center. Nice silver sharpie marker. You don't have to have an automatic center punch, but it helps. I'm first going to drill it with a small drill bit just to get the, uh, the center location perfect. Make sure you peck drill and use plenty of oil. All right, I put some blue Loctite on the bolt. Got our fancy flag nut. Get as tight as you can with your bare hands. A uh, smaller size oil filter wrench works great for tightening this. Next up, front shocks. A little tricky on the passenger side. So many things are easier to work on on JKs than other Jeeps, but this is not one of them. Next up is sway bar links. Use a brand new bolt on the top, washer on the back. Washer on the outside. Nylac nut. The bottom side we're going to use the factory bolt with the factory washer head nut. Next up is the track bar. Reuse your factory bolts. Reuse your factory flag nut. This is where it helps to have a partner turn the steering wheel until it lines up. More. A little more. Come on. One more time with feeling. Oh, we did it. Good job. These are poly bushings, so you can tighten them right away, 
but we're still going to come back and retorque them with a torque wrench. Next is our front brake line drop brackets. We're going to reuse the factory bolt in the factory position. So the bend back will line up with the frame. Just need to re-bend your brake line a little bit. Try to make it look halfway decent when you're done. New bolt with a nut no washer. When you've got everything bolted in, just take a quick double check. Make sure your ABS wire, you'll have to pull it out, out of a couple of the clamps. Make sure it's got a little bit of slop in it. Uh, breather hose, again, just pull it straight down. The shock's fully extended right now. The front axle's at full droop. Uh, even under articulation, the shock's gonna limit it. So nothing's gonna get any worse than it is right now because everything's inside the shock. So even if this droops a little more, it's not gonna get any worse. So one of the things you're gonna have to do with any lift kit over two and a half inches, on the 2012 or newer Wranglers, the, you end up with an exhaust interference. The exhaust interferes with the front drive shaft at full droop. Riding around on the street, you're gonna be just fine. So what we've done is we've installed a, a set of exhaust spacers. So they bring the exhaust down and back, which mostly clears up the interference, but doesn't clear it up 100%. The better solution that we really recommend if you're gonna wheel the Jeep is a, is a new front drive shaft with a double cardan style CV. It'll be a smaller diameter. The double cardan pushes the pivot point forward a little bit and buys us enough clearance so, we're, so it'll truly clear. Moving on to the back of the Jeep, uh, we're gonna support it with some jack stands under the axle. We're gonna remove the shocks, disconnect the sway bar links just to make it easier to get the springs in and out. Um, we're gonna remove the rear track bar. We're gonna loosen all the lower control arms, all the upper control arms, and let's get to it. Hey guys, a uh, quick interruption to our previously recorded video because we have had a change to our upper coil spring retainer cone. Um, previously, we had a, a stud that was going to go into here, uh, and then you would have to tighten the hardware at the top of the frame. Uh, we tried to make it a little bit easier to install. You're going to take a, just a standard bolt, uh, which, which is provided, and drop that on in and kind of see that. Uh, and then that's going to make it up to a, uh, a weld nut and you can kind of see it's got the teeth all the way around it. That's gonna go up on top of the frame there and those teeth are gonna grab the frame so that when you tighten it up, it doesn't spin. So, first thing first, get the nut plate up into position here and just try and get it as straight as possible so it's a little bit easier to guide that bolt home. Tools here, socket and extension that'll hold everything in place and then go ahead and put the cone onto the isolator. Now I do have an additional spacer on here uh, and that is on this particular vehicle to help um, accommodate the extra weight uh, from accessories and, and gear. Just make sure that that plate stays to the frame. Once it starts tightening up there, the teeth will do the rest of the work. All right, now with the upper coil uh, retaining cone in place and torqued down, ready to get the coil back in there and put the lower retainer on as well. Uh, to start on this one, uh, I am putting on our optional coil correction uh, pad. We do have another video out there. Highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, now that that's on, we can go ahead and get the spring into place. Just guide that right over the cone. And you can already kind of see it doing its job, right? It's, it's loose, but it's not going to fall out. And it's going to have that cone shape to guide it back to its appropriate position. Go ahead and get that large washer. We'll slip that over the bottom coil. And then get the nut through, or the uh, bolt through there. And then we'll find the flag nut that's already hanging out in there. All right, we'll get that torqued down and that will conclude the installation of the rear coil spring retainers. Next up is our rear bump stop spacers. You may be wondering why we give you a rear bump stop spacers and not front bump stop spacers. Well, this is a benchmark series kit. We've got our foundation series, our benchmark series, and our premium series. The benchmark is specifically designed to include some of the common upgrades. 
One of the first things you're going to want to do to your JK if you wheel it hard is get more suspension travel, more articulation. So to do that, you're going to need longer shocks. It's really easy to put longer shocks in the rear. The only problem you're going to run into is that your coil springs are going to fall out and your brake lines aren't going to be long enough. So that's why we include the coil spring retainers, the bump stop spacers, which are required with the coil spring retainers, and the stainless steel braided brake hoses. Include that all just to get you a lot more suspension travel, more articulation, a better experience on the trail. Next up, rear truck bar bracket. Right on over your existing. The sleeve goes inside to take up the space. Nylock nut. U-bolts. Second U-bolt goes on the inside. Tighten everything up and we're done. Next up is our rear stainless steel brake hoses. Reusing the original bolt. Goes in at the same angle as the old one. Self-drilling screw. I forgot to mention, break this flare nut loose before you remove this back bracket from the frame. One of the most important steps when you're putting in stainless steel brake hoses is to orient the hose. You can see, if I turn it this way, it's rubbing on the sway bar. If I turn it too far this way, it's got a funny twist to it. Find a nice, happy medium spot. It's very important to get it in the right spot. Now to a lot more droop, we're gonna have to relocate the ABS wire. E-brake cables are also tight. I'm gonna unbolt them from the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and take this bracket all the way out of the Jeep to allow a little more droop. All right, one of the next things that needs to be addressed when we're doing a, a kit like this is, uh, especially for the added travel, is going to be the sway bar links. Now, a little easier said than done. We can't just go ahead and throw a longer link on. We need to be able to make sure that it has the right uh, range of motion. Two things that we have to do for that is a, a frame spacer, which is gonna go right up between the sway bar mount and the frame. Also, this relocation bracket that's gonna go on the axle for the link to connect to. All right, now that we've got the bracket bolted up on the uh, axle side here, and we've got our spacer up at the frame side, time for links. Go ahead and get these started. Now, one thing to keep in mind is on the axle side, uh, we do have two different sizes of provided hardware. On the bottom, you're gonna be looking at a half inch. The top one, you're gonna be looking at a 12 millimeter. And while I finish this up, we're gonna cut back to Jason. Next up, we're putting the track bar back in. Going in the middle hole, using the factory bolt and flag nut. Not gonna tighten it yet until it's at ride height. Okay, the breather hose was a little bit short. So what I'm gonna do is relocate it on the frame side. I'm not bring it down any lower, I'm just moving it towards the center of the Jeep a little bit. So this is the factory clip that held it back here. I'm going to move it out near the end and clip it right back where it was from the factory. I don't know if you've noticed the, uh, the grass under this Jeep. Looks like maybe the customer's been driving through some cornfields or something. <laughs> now if the Jeep set at exact ride height, we're going to torque, torque all the rubber bushings. Uh, the lower control arms, which are an M14 bolt, torque to 130 foot pounds. Well, our installation's all wrapped up. First of all, just look at it. It just looks fabulous. This is 37 inch tires. It's gonna need just a little bit of trimming to clear these for some serious off-roading. So we weren't able to flex it out on the forklift. I really wanted to show you guys that. But 
drove down the highway, it drives really nice. Off the highway, it's gonna have some great articulation. Got some nice long shocks. It's gonna travel really well front and rear. It's gonna really flex well. So all in all, a huge improvement in this Jeep overall.